Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting um, today once again we're using the artisan water mixable oil colors yep they're water mixable <laughs> and uh, it does confuse some people when they see me doing this but they are water mixable and uh, I'm gonna be doing something different today I'm gonna go for this fantasy landscape that I've designed it's um, <laughs> it's a very simple concept. An eye in the sky, some mountains, maybe stars, and some weird creature things, and a, sort of a uh, break in the land, which you can see down. And I can just be creative and uh, do whatever I like, but using this as my idea. <laughs> my idea, strange idea, we'll see how it goes. So I've been looking into uh, fantasy paintings recently and uh, oh, I better tell you what I've got on my palette actually. I'm just going to move some paints out of the way. So I've got um, a few colours on my palette. And I've got Alizarin Crimson, which is what my sky is going to be. I've got some um, Cabin Red, which I don't know about that yet, but I've put it on there. Some uh, black, ivory black, some Viridian Green. Yeah, I'm using a green. I'm starting to use this green more, actually. I mean, uh, for a while, I was mixing my green out of my blue and yellow. And uh, but here and there, I'm starting to use that. Um, some titanium white and some burnt umber, and I probably have some burnt sienna as well. Just thinking about the land, I'm probably going to want some of that. So put some there. <laughs> and uh, and there we go. There's my few colours. If I need more, I just put some more on. So uh, I don't waste any. So I think today, instead of uh, doing a drawing on the canvas, like I do quite a lot, I'm gonna just paint straight on. <laughs> just go for it. And I think uh, we need to start the sky off. And crimson and white is our colour for the sky, a real strong sky, strong bright, which will affect the colours on the ground, well, should affect the colours on the ground, whoa, Let's move that brush out of the way, the sky colour should, but this is a fantasy painting, so who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> if you want to do this in uh, other oils, say you've got the Bob Ross oils, you can. Yes, you can put liquid uh, clear on to make the surface smoother if you wish. It's up to you. I'm just using water because that's all I need for, this, for these paints. So let's think about where the eye's going to go. I'm thinking here actually. We'll leave that area for the eye. And uh, yeah. And we can always add more crimson as we go out if we want to have it lighter near the eye in the sky. So why am I doing a fantasy picture? What, what, what's going on? Um, well, the reason is I got these two books from uh, my local second-hand bookstore. And I love going in there. <laughs> it's become uh, a bit of an obsession for me to go in that shop and have a look at the, what books have been brought in. 
so many of the art books have not even been opened <laughs> so I don't know maybe I'm uh, fulfilling the lives of these art books and people that have wrote them and they wanted someone to learn from them well I am certainly am and I'm not just buying them to look at the pictures either I actually read them <laughs> Something uh, when I used to, when I first started painting, I hardly ever read what the artist, <laughs> this sounds terrible actually, I hardly read what the artist put in there, I'd just look at the pictures and I'd be inspired and that's it, uh, I'd get some paints out and I'd have a go at a painting and uh, I'd miss a lot of genius that's been explained in the book. Just have a my picture yeah, okay. so I want to have sort of some mountain shapes in the sky yeah. okay I thought about using a blue in the sky as well to break up the uh, the red but no I don't once once you uh, get the idea in your head I mean you can change it I'm always changing things when I'm when I'm designing paintings and things changing my ideas all the time but I thought the red sky would look quite good, just a block of colour. Because I can go darker a, a little bit around the edges using the crimson. I've used all my crimson up. Let's get some more. There we go. Yeah, so let's just add some more of this. A bit crimson on the edges. This paint, it does uh, blend lovely. I mean, I only use a little bit of water, and it still goes on nice. That's the advantage of oil paints. They blend nice. Acrylics do as well. It's just I find not as well. Not quite as smooth. But hey, I haven't really practiced enough with acrylics. So I can't really comment on them. Because I've seen some amazing paintings done in acrylics just not by me <laughs> yeah. right. I kind of want to strengthen this around the eye here yeah. something like that yeah something like that will do And we need to stop putting the eye in. So, what colours shall I use? I'm thinking a green eye. That was my original idea. So we'll we'll keep with that. What's that? Brown. Yeah, brown and green. Brown and green. Some of that white in there. Let's make. That's quite nice. And it can be a light colour and then we can uh, darken it so the eye the eye is going to be here I'm 
I really do have a bigger brush than that. <laughs> Uh, it is funny, um, sometimes you just stick with the same brush and you're like, oh, this is taking a long time. And then you realise you're using a little brush <laughs> to fill in a large area. And uh, <laughs> I've done that a couple of times. I'm spending a while with this, with a big, and with a small brush, sorry. And, I'm, and then I think, oh, what am I doing? This is taking such a long time is because I'm not using the right size brush. Just grab some white there in that green. A bit of a light colour. Okay. Some of this black. And we want to create the um, the pupil, so the eye is sort of like that. So the pupil will be sort of there. As so straight away, I I always sit back. To and have a look. Yeah. Just gonna grab some of this crimson. Shape of the eye. So the eye finishes about there. Just sit back, have a little look. Going back forward again and Yeah, it's not too bad actually. <laughs> not too bad. So I wanna get the uh, white of the eye. Let's fill that bit in as well. Let's uh, let's say a bit of bright red, a bit of brown, and white. So we get nice. Because the, the white of the eye is never white. <laughs> mm, it's probably a little bit. That's better. Fill it in with this. See how it looks. Might be a little too pink. now <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see It's not too bad, is it? I think what would be good is use this colour. Looking at my brushes, thinking which one should I use? I want to get more green in the eye. This has got black on it, but that's dull green, so that's alright. Okay. Let's 
grab some more of this black. Yeah, that's better. So now, oh, I just got paint all over me. <laughs> Went to grab a brush. Ended up moving the brush in between my fingers, and uh, yeah, problems. Anyway, green and white, green and white. Get some white color there. Let's Maybe there was some light in his eye here. Over here. Of course, if you're doing this, you can uh, do all sorts of the eye. Put in some brown. can change the colours and do all kinds of things, especially in a fantasy picture. Got this more black again. What I want to do now, I'm going to soften the out a bit. So I want it to look like this eye has just opened up in the sky. So I'm going to smoothen that off a bit. Smoothen. <laughs> Not sure if that's a word. <laughs> Maybe it is. I don't know. There we go. So. Let's uh, assume this is a woman's eye. So trying not to. Uh, Mess this up too quickly. <laughs> Let's put some uh, eyelashes in here. So we're going to create a uh, a line underneath. So I can uh, put a few eyelashes off. Yeah, um, some light in the eye would be good to make it look a bit more more like an eye. Be. Yeah, quite like that. Uh, I'm gonna think the uh, teardrop area would be sort of there, wouldn't it? So I want to try and get something there. Let's get that bit of red. Oof, that's hot. 
almost burnt myself putting that on. didn't actually originally want all that there, but I like it. It's probably a white where the teardrop would be. I think there would be white there as well. I'm sort of having a look. Seeing if I like it. What I don't like. And what I like. Yeah, that's not too bad. It looks like an eye in the sky. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, of course, if you're painting at home and you want to uh, really go for it, really get a realistic eye in there, then uh, you know, spend some time on it. Really uh, get painting all the little details of the eye. The only thing I, I see straight away is the, uh, should really be darker up here. So I'll just put a little bit of darkness there. And in here as well. And um, it's just Let's look at that. Yeah, I think that looks better. There's something <laughs> uh, I'm terrible. I, I can never let things finish. And uh, sometimes it's a problem. Sometimes you get it just right and then you do a little bit more and then it, it kind of messes it up a bit. No, I like that. I like that now. Okay. <laughs> I will stop. You can't stop till you get enough. I can't stop till I get enough. Right. <laughs> let's, uh, let's look at these mountains. Hold on. What need a bit better brush than that? I need a, uh, a filbert. This feel bit will do. It's not been softened like my other ones. This is still uh, a little bit tough. Let's just go go into some black. I might get a little bit of burnt sienna in with the black actually. Okay, so let's start thinking about the mountainous area that we were supposed to be putting in. So 
I'm going to put this in. I'm uh, looking back at my original image, my uh, picture. So that's what this painting is based on, and it is good to have a uh, a little sketch so you can look at or or some some sort of reference. And the reason I say that is uh, I spent a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> it amazed me the stuff that I used to do. No wonder uh, it took me so long to get anything decent on a canvas. Um, but anyway, <laughs> it's all part of the learning process, isn't it? I can't even remember what I was going to say now. I'm getting so into this. I do like that red in the, in the mountain. I think I might have to pick up some more red when I do this. Right, what was I saying? Oh yeah, there was a lot of times I would do paintings and then have no reference, like none. Nothing. <laughs> and I can't believe that I used to do that. It's good for your um, creative side. I mean, it's great for your creative side to be able to do that. <coughs> but then... Uh, what I used to find happened is I would get stuck and I'd be doing a painting and then I would be like I don't know what to do now I don't know how to improve it or I don't know where, what I'm, where I'm going with it or anything, I just didn't know so doing an initial sketch or having an idea is very important just find some red in there, I quite like it <coughs> it's one of those moments where I'm thinking should I transfer to a bigger brush? Mm, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't I do know that I want some light there I don't know why. See, what I, something else that I try to do now, and I got this out of one of the books um, that I've been reading, and that's try and keep your mind relaxed when you're painting. Try and stay relaxed because then you become more creative. start doing more things let's get some more red here oh, I'm liking this I'm liking this colour I'm going to get some bright red in here as well I don't know, a hot area Okay. Yeah. So I'm going in between my reds and my blacks. My blacks, my black. And then uh, what I'm going to have to think about is the uh, the eye. The eye is our light source. By the way, I'm just going to. Uh, put this in because we've got like a, like a cavern type not a cavern a um, an area that goes down where there's been some sort of an earthquake or something I'll just put that in yeah our light source is the eye in the sky so here we go. This, this is what happens. I have a line of brushes. I don't bother washing them. I just go from brush to brush. So I've saved the um, mixture that I put in the eye. Put a bit more green in it. And now I can start looking at these the mountains. And I can start using this colour as my highlight. 
just sort of lightly grazing my brush. Yeah. Creating different effects using this. Using the eye. The eye is the light source now. It's different, isn't it? And of course, by doing this, oh, what, what am I saying? I'm saying that this eye is watching the light areas is cast because of the eye. So if you don't want to be seen, you need to hide behind the mountain. The all seen eye. I'll throw some out in here as well. That mountain looks a bit spindly, doesn't it? Let's get some dark in that area there. Can use that same darkness to add a bit more depth into this. Okay, so now, what am I thinking? I've got to uh, create areas of land. I've got these weird creatures as well. Strange looking creatures. You know what I might do? Where does this um, area where the land sort of drops off. Might add this red in there. want it to have like this red there because then uh, when I start doing details and things it's going to change but then it give me that base red I can use. I used a bit of water there just to just to make it last a little bit. So I can either um, draw in my characters now that I'm going to put in, or I can add them in afterwards. And I'm thinking afterwards, I'll stick with this brush for a while. Because I just want to create the uh, appearance. you can always do um, drawings first. Draw in uh, your characters and then sort of paint it all like you're colouring in a picture. I do that sometimes. Mainly when I'm doing commissions. If you need the, the uh, person to look like the person you're painting then uh, <laughs> Kind of have to be accurate. But I'm not using that much paint really, I'm just covering so I can uh, change things as I go. Okay. 
So, uh, let's just almost enough. Yeah, I see. I really like that red bit there. Makes me want to do more of that somewhere else. And also, well, I, might, I wouldn't mind a bit of that eye colour. Sort of creeping around there and on there as well. Maybe, maybe. Need the eye to look, need the eye to be aware. What's below it? <laughs> if he was doing like a uh, a science fiction movie drawing, <laughs> <sighs> this would be uh, an interesting one for you. This would work for horror films as well. Having a scary eye in the sky. Could have the, the character that's paranoid. And wherever he looks, there's an eye looking at him. Well, then, another question I asked myself is that a uh, really an eye or is it a satellite? Is it a uh, depiction of what the satellite can see? <laughs> see, all these little stories you, you make up in your mind help with your painting. Okay. <clears throat> Just grab some of this black and... darken this area here. I like that bit of colour there, so we'll leave that. Okay. <coughs> so, I need some yellow, I think. I think what I'm going to do, my weird creatures, that I did a sketch of to show you, show you it quickly. I don't. This weird creature. I'm going to go with that they're the plants of this planet. <laughs> so I'm just going to get some yellow. Yellow. Some of this meridian green. Yellow. Okay, so we got some of this green. And now I've got like this creature. So let's have him the plant of this earth. Well, this planet. <laughs> I'm gonna have it having legs. Like this. Just kind of imagining how it would be.
have four legs maybe. Maybe five. It'd be kind of weird. Hmm. I'm starting to think not legs. Maybe these are actually roots. Because it's a plant, isn't it? But it can move around. Okay, now I need to make it look like it's stood there. So, shadow. Something like that. And then uh, this head that's on a stem. something like this. Gotta be sort of um, a little bit uh, <laughs> familiar. Using that clump of yellow as the highlight, create a bit of line. Something like that. And uh, some darkness. And uh, of course, that's quite different. <laughs> I must have had some red on my brush, and it's made the yellow go all yellowy browny. I quite like it actually. So I'm going to use it just to add bits of highlights in there. I need a bit more light. Maybe I'll use some of this pink.
use a little bit of light just to could do with a green more than anything actually. Just wipe off some paint and then pick some white up. See if we can get some of this eye colour. Eye colour. And we can have some of that. So then you got to wonder, why is it doing that? There must be some reason, and maybe it's trying to eat something. So I'm going to have to do something there. I know. <laughs> Maybe it's just a worm. <laughs> Maybe it's a little... Maybe it's something else. I don't know, it's an alien. details for it. Some sort of a worm or something. And then uh, I might do another one of those smaller over here. just about see it back there. So we've got some life in the painting, which is what we wanted. Now we need to uh, start working on this. This is in a way. doing here is dragging paint down. Dragging the paint down. Apologies for the uh, audio change. I my mic turned itself off. <laughs> so we're back on the mic again. And here we go. Right, and now, I think what I'm going to do Ok, 
Okay, I was using brown there. Using some umber. Now I'm going to use some black. Some black. And I'm sort of starting at the bottom and then uh, pulling up. Just to make things go into uh, a darker area. do just get some of this reddish color I just want to uh, clean these areas up here just to make them a bit more obvious that it's an edge sort of dragging it across Full to have dark bits as well in the land. Gives it a bit more realism. Sometimes realism in a fantasy picture. <laughs> Just by using brush strokes this way, it'll make it obvious that this is this is this side. Just by using angles, and it's really strange how it works. directional strokes it gives the illusion of something else something out of this world <laughs> okay of course when you do yours you can add all sorts of things in Okay. 
Okay, I'm sort of sitting back, having a look. What I feel is missing. is crimson. <laughs> Simply crimson in this side of the land. It's got a nice redness to it, but it needs more of this red. More crimson to make it look like it belongs. It doesn't really belong at the moment. some effects Just roll it see I really like the way it picked the red up on that one okay now I want to do, I want to uh, just exaggerate the light coming from the eye a little bit more. Down here. Oops. <laughs> Didn't want to exaggerate it that much, but that's okay. that one up now, that background one, it didn't really work anyway I didn't think, so we'll leave him. Okay. Well, I could go into detail and start adding like a dark area under there. Lots of details everywhere. And I'll just put a few in. And break up that black there. A bit of red. Okay. I think um, we'll call this one done. Um, 
but it gives you a good uh, starting point to do a fantasy painting and uh, you can add all kinds of creatures and people in there and uh, and you're only restricted by your imagination yeah sketching helps though sketching your idea helps definitely and then uh, do some experiments have some fun and uh, hope you enjoyed this episode and i'll see you at another one cheers bye